So we are really breaking from the mold this week because we're going to have a talk. Then there's been nothing midweek. I don't know. I don't know what's happened. I don't know what's happened, but um, we're doing a talk. Well, I do know what's happened. I said I'd be well up for talking, but I want to talk on Sunday. So that's what happened. Um, so we are starting a series on repentance, and repentance is is you know it's the lifeblood of this church. It's what this church is built on, really. Uh, original design repentance and the living free course and Silas and Annie the founding pastor of the church uh, their lives were changed by repentance and honestly I look around the room and do you know what I see I see I see serial repenters <laughs> prolific repenters people who just can't stop themselves from repenting and uh, I'm following in your wake I'm learning how to do it and and uh, you know I was going to say about Chris and Alex they are they are two of the most prolific repenters I've ever met do you know what I mean try have a conversation where they don't repent it's really unusual. Uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. And, um, and so we're going to be spending quite a few weeks looking at different specific areas, uh, what we describe here in Hope as potential strongholds, areas where um, there's ingrained belief and behavior, ingrained uh, challenges that we, that we need help breaking from to experience freedom. And we'll be looking at specific topics in the week to come. But this week, I just want to introduce repentance and give us an, an overarching view of it. So, I want to talk about two things, the, the purpose of repentance and the process of repentance. And I've tried to define them in my own words, and, and I'm sure you've done that too. But the, the purpose of repentance is this, it's to enable us to live in unbroken union with God and fulfill our original design. So the purpose of repentance is to enable us to live in unbroken union with God and according to our original design. So original design is uh, our belief that God has made every single person deliberately with unique characteristics, unique purposes, and we often pray for one another and ask God for uh, words of knowledge, words of insight that help us to unveil other people's original design. Because when you know who God made you to be, it helps you to walk in line with who he made you to be. So this is what repentance is. Here at Hope, we believe repentance is to enable you to live an unbroken union, always with Jesus in every part of your life and true to your original design. So that's what it is, and this is how it happens. It's the, or this is the process that repentance does in us. Bit of a longer sentence, tried to cut it down, didn't work. Repentance is a process of turning away from areas of our lives built on disconnection with God, from God, where we have believed lies about him and ourselves in order to rebuild our lives in unbroken connection with God on the truth of who he is. I'll explain that. So repentance is the process, it's, it's the mechanism by which we, we stop living in, a, in an area where we're distant from God and disconnected from God, where we believe something that's not true about him or about ourselves. Repentance is a mechanism that enables us to get away from that into a new way of living, of thinking and behaving that is based on connection with God, closeness with God, where we believe the truth about who he is and about who we are. Does that make sense? So repentance is a thing that enables us to go from that to this, from disconnection to connection, from lie to truth. Okay? And we at Hope have, um, through the course Living Free, which we'll be doing again later in the year, so this is just a, a snapshot of what Living Free is, but we have, we use a language of five R's of repentance. Okay? To help us understand that process. How do we go on that journey from distance to nearness, from lie to truth? And these are the five R's we've got. Recognize, repent, receive, rebuke, and replace. Let me explain them briefly. So recognize is when that moment when you first identify that there's something in you that needs to change. And I'm going to be talking more about how we recognize uh, later in the talk. So recognize is a moment where you think, mm, something's, something's here in me that isn't quite right. It's not quite built on, it's not, it's not healthy, it's not good. Something needs to change. That's recognize. Repent is where you actually stop and you acknowledge to God and to uh, probably other people, close, intimate friends. You acknowledge to them, I don't want to live like this anymore. God, I'm sorry for living like this. I don't want this to be my normal. And we'll look more at that later on. Receive is where you receive forgiveness. It's very easy at that point to feel ashamed, to feel like, why did I even let that happen? I shouldn't have done that. I feel guilty. But actually, 
God wants none of that because he forgives. As soon as there's repentance, he's ready to empower us to change. He doesn't hold guilt over us. He doesn't hold shame over us. So we receive his forgiveness. Thank you, Lord, that you forgive me for living with comparison in my life, for living with fear in my life, whatever it may be. Those are just some of my personal examples. Uh, and then we rebuke the thing. We say, hey, comparison, get out of my life. In the name of Jesus, get out. You have no place here. You don't have the right to rule who I am. God didn't design me with you in mind. Goodbye. There's a door. Use it. And replace it with the truth. If comparison was the issue, I replace it with the truth that God has made me more than enough in who I am. That I am significant in him. That I am secure. I am strong. That instead of comparing to others, I can celebrate them. That's, a, that's the five R's. Any questions on the five R's? Any of you think, if you've never heard it before, you think, okay, that one didn't make any sense. Any questions, please? The culture of hope is interrupt if you want to interrupt for a good reason. So if you want to interrupt, please interrupt. I warmly welcome it. Probably help. Okay, always interrupt if you want to. So I want to talk more about recognize, but before I do, I want us to have a chance in our groups on our tables to talk about um, probably in a little bit more depth in, uh, than the first half, but actually talk about a moment where you think, do you know what? This was a significant moment of repentance in my life that really led to a change of direction in the way I lived or the way my, way my life was going. And I want us to talk about it because I want the language of repentance, the language of um, being quite intimate with each other to be quite normal. I want it to be okay to talk about these repentances in, in day-to-day conversation. So we're gonna have sort of 10 minutes just to share. Actually, this was, you know, and sh- share as you're comfortable sharing. If you feel like, oh my goodness, I do not wanna share that thing. Don't share that thing. If you think, actually, there's a good example of repentance, that's quite vulnerable, but I don't feel like I'm really exposed myself unnecessarily, share that one instead, you know, be, be sensible. But I'd love you to share and talk with each other to, to um, get, get into the language of repentance. So 10 minutes to do that, talk about an area of your life and your past where you experienced repentance, went through repentance that led to good, positive change. Does that make sense? 10 minutes? Lovely, off we go. So I, I wanted to say, I forgot to say in that, in that first little section about the five R's, that sometimes, um, sometimes they can be incredibly helpful to go, literally to go through specifically and work through with somebody, a, a, a close friend or, or a couple of others. Maybe if you've been at Hope before, maybe with your four, which is a sort of the small prayer group, discipleship groups that we, we encourage. But also, they can be a bit formulaic, the, the, the five R's, and it, you, it can sometimes feel like you're trying to put a, a square peg in a round hole by forcing yourself through them. But the process of repentance will probably have those elements in it if it's leading to, to genuine life change and behavior change in your life. So don't always feel restrained to like, gosh, I have to go through this whole, these five R's and name them in process, in order, sorry, um, if it's not helpful. But they're also there to be used if it is helpful. So I, I want to talk about the first R, recognize. And I want to talk about it because uh, I, without ownership and appetite, there can be no true repentance. If you don't want to see change in your life, you will never repent. If you don't want something to change, it's not going to change. You know, I've, I've, I've spoken enough with Christy and understand about Celebrate Recovery and the recovery journey that the desire to change has to be there. Is that true, Christy? Amen. And your amazing story, that's right at the heart of it. I know through talking with Ben, he says exactly the same, that the appetite to change is the first thing. And in many ways, repentance, you know, we're, we're all talking about addiction in our lives, addiction to disconnection from God, addiction to insignificance. And unless there's ownership and appetite, we are not going to repent and change. So what helps us to recognize the things in us that need to change, the areas that are holding us back from us living out our original design. I think there are four things, probably more, but here are four. Uh, there were three and they were all negative and I thought, Do you know what, there are sometimes, there is a positive reason for recognition and that's revelation. Sometimes you're reading scripture or you're in a conversation with someone and it feels like God just opens your eyes and you think, Do you know what, there's more for me than I've got right now. Nothing bad's happened, you just think, Do you know what, I think there's more and I want the more. I want that positive extra thing. So revelation can be a a, a reason. But in my experience, these next three help me to recognize areas in need of repentance far more often than I'd like, but far more than than revelation. Failure, breakdown, and hardship. The trio from from our dreams. (laughs) 
the things we want to talk about most are failures, breakdowns, and hardships. Joy to the world. And the reason that they, that they um, create appetite is because they, they put you in a position where you think, I can't keep living like this. This can't carry on. Or I can't cope with this. I wish all of my repentance happened through revelation. All of the stuff that I would want to talk about probably did. All of the stuff that affected my character and actually helped me grow as a person, grow from a boy to a man, happened in the bottom three. I would say I've probably had the, one, one of, no, probably the hardest year of my life. I've been, uh, became a dad just over a year ago, and then we were doing a building project and had some very tricky aspects in that process. And I've got a bit of a track record of dealing with anxiety, never been diagnosed uh, formally, so I, I can't say I have anxiety, but I definitely have s- struggled with anxiety, uh, stress, and low mood, all in the mixing pot of uh, a happy husband for dear Rebecca, my wife. <laughs> and so this year has been very, very, very challenging, and there have been a number of times where uh, I feel more aware now than ever of the areas of my life where I need to see change. And it's most often come about because, I, because I've realized that I just can't keep doing this. I can't, I can't keep on having these aspects of my life that are just so contrary to the truth of who God says he is. Where, you know, it, it, I just can't do that anymore. There was this moment where uh, we, Rebecca and I were on holiday in December and um, we had a great time. And we came back and within, within four hours, I was just, uh, we'd got a note from a neighbor and uh, I just got in a proper spin. And she said to me that night, she said, Andrew, it, and she, and she did, it's going to sound harsh, it wasn't. She said, Andrew, it, it's like being married to a different man. The guy you were on holiday to the guy you are now, it's like being married to a different man. And I thought, if that's not a message of something needs to change, <laughs> I don't know what is. You know, and it's, it's, it's uncomfortable. It's not pleasant to hear, but it's necessary, isn't it? And... and um, and there are two responses to that kind of challenge from our loved ones, uh, because, because we, um, either they grow us, or either their challenge grows us, or their challenge wounds them, because we become defensive and push them away. And the people we love the most, either we let them in or we shut them out with such violence that we do damage to the relationship. And the amount of defensiveness that I've thrown back, you know, I can't do that anymore. So I've got to change. So recognition happens through weakness, through our brokenness, through our failures. And I wish it was different, but it's never or rarely different. And so I've spoken to a few people in the church to to ask about how to deal with uh, stress, anxiety. And and the story is the same. The story is the same, which is that it's a gateway to change, to repentance and to growth. I said two people in particular, Rob Douglas and Paul Brent, have been amazingly helpful for me in this, which is that trying to see the gift of, of your own weakness because you're, you're beyond your capacity to manage yourself. And so, you, anyway, I divulge ever so slightly. So, these are things that help us to get ownership. So, if you experience any of these things, especially the last three, Do not miss the opportunity to repent. Please, for literally God's sake, please do not miss the opportunity to repent. Because if you do not grab the opportunity to repent in the midst of failure, breakdown, and hardship, you'll probably just become hard-hearted and bitter. Hard-hearted and bitter. If you grab the opportunity, you'll grow. You'll become more and more soft-hearted, and you'll mature into into the sort of adult Christian that we know that we are all designed to be. So, examples from scripture of how this ownership moment happens. I often think that sometimes God, God is trying to get our attention about something that needs to change for a long time. And it, get, it kind of, maybe it escalates and escalates until we get to the point where we experience breakdown. And finally, we're going to have ownership. And God's like, finally, you, you, you admit that you've got something, that you've got a problem. Man, I've been trying to get your attention about that for a while. Well, here's an example about Peter and the moment where he takes ownership for his brokenness. Happens when he denies that he knows Jesus three times. It's, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry, an unnecessary animation there. That should have always been there, Luke 22. But anyway, Luke 22, 54 to 62. If you want to open it in your Bibles, that'd be great. Uh, find it in Luke chapter 22. Do turn to it now. 
Uh, and then once you've turned to it, I'll read it out loud. So, so the quicker you turn, the quicker I'll read. So grab your Bible, flick to Luke 22. If anyone gets a page number, do shout it out. And so um, that'd be helpful. 873 in the, in the maroon colored Bibles? 874, possibly. Yeah, in that one. Great, thereabouts. Here we go, Luke chapter 22, verse 54 to 62. Then a servant girl seeing him, Peter, as he sat in the light and looking closely at him, said, this man also was with him. So context, Jesus has just been arrested. Jesus to uh, just outside the area where Jesus is being sort of interrogated. And Peter's waiting to see Jesus come out. And someone comes and speaks to Peter, this servant girl. So that's where we jump into. This man was also with him. But Peter denies it, saying, woman, I do not know him. And a little later, someone else saw him and said, you also are one of them. But Peter said, man, I am not. And after an interval of about an hour, still another insisted, saying, certainly this man also was with him, for he too is a Galilean. But Peter said, man, I do not know what you are talking about. And immediately while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. And remember that Jesus said to Peter earlier, before the rooster crows three times, you will deny me. And Peter said, no way will I deny you. And the Lord turns, so Jesus comes out, and as he's walking, he turns and looks at Peter dead in the eye. And Peter remembered the saying of the Lord, how he had said to him, before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out, Peter went out and wept bitterly. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a picture of ownership. He went out and he wept bitterly. There is no tidy way, there is no neat and tidy way to recognize If there's not strong emotion in it, potentially question it. Potentially. So this was our this was our circle, the five R's. But in reality, repentance is more a lifestyle than it is a process. So one of the things that Rob really helped me with was he he talked to me about neural pathways. If you want to know more and want to hear it explained properly, talk to Rob. But what he said was that um, our thought patterns are like paths through, uh, if you think of, if you imagine a field of very high grass, and the first time you cross that field, you've got to beat a path out. You've got to, you've got to squish the grass down and walk that thing through. The next time you come to that field, there's, there, there's a very, very faintly beaten out track. And so it's easier to take that track again. So, so with our thought patterns, the first time you think something, you've beaten out a new path. Next time you come around to that situation again, it's easy to take that same route, think that same thought. Then, after time, you get this ingrained thought behavior, let's say anxiety in response to a situation. As soon as you get the situation, you take the path of least resistance. Bang, straight down that path. And there's a huge amount of effort, work, time, prayer, repentance to beat out a new path to find a new way of thinking, to change the fabric of of the way our brains work. And and I believe there's like a physiological change of our pathways as we do that process. So as much as it would be nice if we repented once of our fear, our control, our anxiety, and then, oh, the neural pathway has changed. Unfortunately, probably not. (laughs) Christy is laughing because, boy, you know, you've told me about this time and time again. Actually, we've got to repeat the process every time we come to that situation until, until our, our nature has changed, until our gut reaction and response to that situation is no longer the old way, but the new way. And so repentance is a repetitive process where we reinforce the message that we've repented, that we reinforce the new truth again and again until we get to the point after years and years and years of practicing this thing day in, day out, of it being like just a habit of normality we realize we're actually different. It's not a silver bullet. It's like, it's like a new way of breathing. It's got to be an ingrained pattern of behavior, which is normal in dialogue, normal in our, our prayer journey and everything. So I, I just wanted to say that, that if you, if you repented of something once, that is a fantastic first step. But you have to reinforce that process by continuing to walk in the truth of that repentance, possibly repenting again and again and again of the same thing. That's not failure. That's not lack of progress. That is just the process of change. And I mean, I didn't know I was such a big Rob Douglas fan, but here's another one for you. Here's another one for the Rob Douglas show. You only gave me two. Well, maybe this is a second one. Uh, The other one Rob Douglas said to me is he said, um, 
you would never come to church and, uh, and say to someone, I really want a six-pack. Would you just pray for me to have a six-pack? Would you just pray now? And you just... He's like, you would just never do that. You know the process to get a six-pack is you go to the gym and you work. And he said, but our approach to mental health is we come and we think it's like a transactional answer to prayer. We'll go, will you just change the way my brain works, please? And he's like, no, it's the same thing. You've got to get into the mental gym. You've got, you've got to work. You've got to process. You've got to work out. You've got to rebeat these pathways. And repentance is a tool that helps us to do that, to practice. It's our gym for our spiritual growth. Did I butcher that? No, I did okay. Thanks. So um, the last thing I want to say is that uh, depending on the, the significance of the thing that we, are, that we recognize dictates the amount of support structure that we should expect to put in place to help us to process it. Think of it like a house. If a picture is wonky in my house, I think I can change that by myself. I'm going to do that. If I need to put on a new radiator, try doing it myself, mm, I'll get some help. Maybe I'll do that with a friend of mine who's a trained plumber. If there was a structural beam in my house that had rotted and it needed changing, I'm going to be getting scaffolding. I'm going to be getting some strong boys in there, which are like props, not just strong men, and, uh, and, and get a structural engineer in and do it properly. Okay? The danger is if we think we can do every aspect of, of, of DIY ourselves, is we do far more damage than good. Okay? So if, if you walked into that house and thought, you know what, I'm just going to whip out those rotten beams at the top and just pop in new ones myself, I'll need a ladder and a hammer, thanks. Yeah? House probably going to fall down. And when it comes to repentance and the things that we're repenting of, we need to know what scaffolding and support we need in order to do the process well. Okay? Some things are just day-to-day repentance. It's you and Jesus. You just walk through that process. You recognize an old thing you repented of. It's come up again. Do the process. Repent. Move on. Keep going. Sometimes it's a new thing you recognize, and it's the first time you're recognizing it. And you think, actually, do you know what? I need to do this with someone else. I need to sit down and walk this process with someone, especially if it's, um, or, or especially if it's like a historic thing and, and you really struggle to talk about it because you're ashamed. Sit down with someone and talk about it because that's often the first step of like unlocking the shame and, and moving on to repentance. But there are some things, and I'm certainly in this space myself right now, where you think, actually, I think I need more help than that. I think I need maybe, I need some counseling. I need some professional support to help me unlock what's going on at the root of this so I can actually move forward and um, change. And that is all part about taking, it's all about recognizing properly. It's about taking ownership of ourselves properly. We do no one a service, especially not the Holy Spirit and especially not ourselves, if we minimize the level of support we need to repent and grow through the strongholds that we recognize. We, we do ourselves no favors if we minimize it. So please, would you, um, well, I, you get the message. So what I want to do now in the next 10 minutes is I want to have a time of prayer because that feeling, that moment of ownership that Peter displayed, and, and the wonderful thing about Peter is we actually get a window into how repentance plays out in his life. So by the end of John's gospel, he has this amazing um, moment with Jesus where Jesus kind of, he experiences the forgiveness. He experiences the replacing truth that he needed. But if we go further forward in Scripture, in the book of Galatians, there's a fascinating moment where, where Paul actually calls Peter out because Peter's living in fear of man. And we realize that Peter's still going through this journey of repentance. It's not just this silver bullet that happened with the, with the crow crying three times and the restoration in John 21. Actually, it was an ongoing journey that Peter struggled with the fear of man. He struggled with it in this situation when he didn't understand what was going on, fear of man. He had to repent. But then in Galatians, he, 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 he's hypocritical because of fear of man. So he had to keep repenting, okay? So it's the principles there. Sorry, I should have explained that beforehand. So that moment of ownership of, I just can't keep living like this. This cannot carry on happening in my life. This has to change. It's been going on long enough. That feeling we have to embrace and grab. 
And I want to pray for us and allow a bit of space. We've got, you know, five, ten minutes. Just to allow the Holy Spirit to um, speak into that emotion, especially if we've been feeling it recently. Okay, so no need to do anything. Just sit where you are. I'll take us through the prayer. And if things, if you do feel like God begins to identify things, so you think, actually, yeah, there's, I'm recognizing something here to help me repent. Okay, then you, you start the journey by probably talking to someone who loves you, who trusts you, that you trust them, and get some advice and, and begin walking that journey with them, okay? So let's pray and see where we go. So Father, thank you that repentance is about accessing our original design. It's about being liberated to experience life as you designed us to experience it. It's about living in loving union with Jesus, in unbroken connection with God the Father. Father, thank you for the, for the failure, breakdowns and hardships. Thank you that they, that they give us opportunity to recognize where we're distant from you, where we're living under the influence of lies. And Father, we pray for, the, for that emotion of, I, I, I can't keep doing this. I can't keep living like this. This can't go on. I pray for that appetite. I pray especially for um, strongholds that have become normal. Things that maybe have been in our lives for years that we've just allowed to be there for whatever reason, I pray that there would be a fresh appetite and sense of ownership over them. Father, thank you that if your Holy Spirit brings about recognition in our lives, he also has a strategy, the people and the journey to walk us out of it. Father, I thank you that there's, there's no shame involved in repentance. In the kingdom, repentance is, is shame-free, guilt-free, but it's ownership high. And Father, I pray that you would highlight the things that really lie at the bottom of our strongholds, the roots, the origins. And if we don't know the roots, Lord, would you, um, would you spur us to, to get help? That the process of recognition, it's okay if it takes time to understand really the roots of what we're, what needs to change. And finally, Father, I pray that if, if there was an eighth letter written by the angel in Revelation to this church, let it not be said that they got complacent with their repentance. That they lost their, their first love for, for that tool that, that defined this culture. So I pray that the gift of repentance would touch every generation in our family. That at this time, in this year, that we would see repentance unfold and unfurl across our family. That we would know the joy that only the Holy Spirit's journey of repentance can bring about in us. And I pray for anyone specifically who feels the emotion today of, I can't, I can't live like this anymore. 
I say thank you, Holy Spirit, for helping them to recognize. And thank you that you always complete what you start. So I pray that they would have a great confidence in your leadership. And they will trust the process. Amen. Oh, thanks, Christy. So, so we're, we'll be going through this journey of repentance over a number of weeks. Um, if you've never been to Hope before, well, this is what we're about, so welcome. Um, and, uh, and there'll also be a chance to do a Living Free course with us later in the year. So do go and grab your kids. If you have children, do stay and connect and chat with others around you if you want to. It's been lovely being with you, and see you next week.